You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now, 30 years after um, General Mohamed Buhari was deposed as head of state in Nigeria, he was sworn in as Nigeria's fifth elected president on the 29th of May 2015. Now, it was the first time in Nigeria's history that an opposition party defeated a ruling party at the polls. And uh, six years after President Muhammad Buhari's presidency in Nigeria, we're taking a look at just how far he has fared. You know, he came into the country um, as president with lots of challenges on his table. There was the Niger Delta militancy, the Boko Haram um, insurgency, economic challenges as well. And we've invited public affairs analyst, Mr. Ladipo Johnson, uh, to assess that with us. Good morning. Mm. Yes, you're welcome. So we've taken a look at just some of the key challenges Buhari was facing when he came into office, especially, you know, his, his, his drive for anti-corruption, Boko Haram insurgents and all of that. Overall, before we begin to break it down to security, economics, you know, and all of that, overall, how would you rate President Muhammad Buhari's six years in office? Wow. Well, um, <clears throat> um, trying not to be um, cynical. I'm trying to be as um, constructive as possible. Um, I'd say that um, he's had better days, and at the moment we're probably around um, what I'll call, I won't say an F9, hmm. but I'll say maybe a, an E or something. I'm trying, um, DE at the moment, um, if we're looking at a grading system. Um, unfortunately, there, 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 there's been lots of activities but unfortunately, the feel-good factor is not there. Uh, Nigerians are despondent at the moment. And um, of course, we all know the insecurity challenges we face and the economic situation we find ourselves in, including the, um, the strength or lack of strength of the um, Nigerian Naira. So um, these are difficult times, maybe made worse slightly by the, co um, by the um, COVID, COVID pandemic, and, um, like with most um, countries as well. But it shows that we were not um, prepared um, before that um, happened. So mm. by and large, um, as I said, we've had a lot of activities, um, some things going on in infrastructure. And everything. I will not just give a blanket, no, things are not working. Um, but overall, I don't think we're where we could be at mm. as a country. Right. Let's okay. bring in um, Mr. Ibrahim Oshinowo. Uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. You're welcome. Thank you. Good morning. All right. So we're, we're having a discussion on the six years of President Mohamed Buhari and the current administration. Um, three days ago, Femi Adishino had put out a statement saying that the president had done very well in the last uh, six years um, and says that Nigeria has, um, you know, Nigeria has, of course, been better or is better right now six years after the, the current administration. And the Nigerians will praise um, him after yes. his term. Uh, do you agree with Femi Adishino there? Um, good morning, viewers. Um, I would like to start by... Um, Joining my point with uh, Mr. Ladipo by saying that um, he has made a very fair statement. Um, Femi Adesion, my good brother and a good friend, um, I will agree with him to some extent that um, a lot of factors needs to be considered in that statement. For instance, the security issue of this country has been emanating from 2003 from Borono State when the um, said leader of Boko Haram was killed. If you look at the trend when Jaradura was there in the southeast, in the south uh, south, the amnesty issue, I'm sure you and I are aware of that, how Jaradura tackled the amnesty issue, those are part of the security challenge that accumulated and snowball into what Buhari is facing right now. Talk about the era of Jonathan also. Um, as at that time, I'm sure Anytime I'm in Abuja, I don't go to Gariki, I don't go to Sovo, I don't go to Use because you will be as extremely as watchful as a spy dog because you don't know where bomb is going to explode at the, in the federal capital territory. So it speaks a lot what Gwari 
has done in terms of security. But you know, you can take that from him that is we are in the six in the last six years that it's hard for you to have any cogent security challenge in the federal capital or within the neighborhood within Abuja. But you can talk about the um, northeast where Boko Haram has been, you know, granted, have their base, and few territories, of course has been captured and recaptured by our gallant military officers. So security challenge is not a one-man business. It's not a Nigerian business alone. It's everywhere. Go to America, come to Britain, come to... Most African countries are facing security challenges. Okay. Most of them. Um, so if you look at the economy, you talk about the economy. Mr. Ibrahim, the economy, Mr. Ibrahim, I won't say the economy let's, is doing well. Mr. Ibrahim, can you hear me? Is now nothing. Mr. Ibrahim, let's zero. stay with security for a minute, right? Um, if you're saying insecurity is everywhere, not just in Nigeria, does that provide any justification as to why we seem to be in a worse place than when President Muhammadu Buhari um, became president in 2015? Let, let me tell you, we are not in the worst. We are not in the worst place. We need to appreciate our country. This country, uh, don't forget that it's been, you know, piloted by a general who knows how combat looks like. You know, if you go to Ghana, the Asante are raising some agitation right now. If you go to Mali, there is a takeover, a military takeover. There is slight civil war. If you go to Cameroon, there is a I mean, secessionist groups in the east of Cameroon, just our neighbor here. If you go to all many other that I can mention, if you go to many other countries, there are challenges. But what I believe that the president can do for us right now, that would downplay all this agitation, you know, imagine marginalization and the rest, is to um, slightly or easily devolve power. Okay, right, see, we'll on, talk about, we'll talk about solutions. Um, we are everybody hold on, hold on, the table hold on, hold on, hold on, Mr. Ashinawa. Yeah, Mr. Ashinawa, hold on. We, of course, there was a national dialogue in 2014. The, the current administration, um, you know, didn't seem like they were keen on implementing some of the uh, uh, resolutions from 2014. Uh, there's talks of another one now. But, you know, before we get, you know, to that part, um, I want to bring in Ladipo Johnson here. Um, Mr. Ashinawa, you have compared the security situation Nigeria is currently dealing with, with, you know, the same in other countries. And you said other, all, every country in the world, a lot of countries in the world have their own security challenges. So I want Ladipo Johnson to respond to that. Um, is Nigeria's security situation pretty much the same with the rest of the world, and so we shouldn't, you know, be so worried? No, we should be worried. I think uh, Mr. Shinawa has, um, has hit the nail on the head. We're, we have, um, as Commander-in-Chief, someone who is a general yep. and has um, failed to adapt to the modern warfare we're facing. The military in the past, not just the six years, going further back, as he rightly said, has failed to adapt to the fact that this war, in quotes, is more to do with um, insurgency. You need uh, more, better intelligence, technology, and what have you. We, we haven't done that. We've got in an anti-corruption regime, we now have a situation where the um, unfortunate death of the Chief of Army Staff, he had raised the issue that um, we hadn't seen the weapons that had been paid for or were meant to have been paid for. So basically, yes, this challenge is around Africa, around the whole world. How have we adjusted to the challenges? That's the question. These things will come, it's the, it's the world. Um, you have terrorism around the world. But how has this government adjusted to the problems we've had, and what are the steps we're taking towards the future? Look at how long it took to even change the, um, the service chiefs and what have you. So when it comes to that, yes, he's a general, and I'll say, rightly or wrongly, I think he's set in his old ways. But we haven't adjusted to what we're facing currently. And that's why you find, just as an example, a lot of um, villages and what have you will tell you that they can't give 
the army or the military information. Some of them have given information about suspected people in their society. And then the villages have been raised a few days or so after. So where, you don't, where the people do not trust the service arms of government, then the people will not assist. He's right, Mr. Shino is right. It's not just the government's duty when it comes to security. But where we, the people, do not have confidence in maybe the police or the army or the DSS to say, oh, I suspect that man and he just came into my town, then we will not support the um, services as we ought to. Okay. So basically, I think that um, we're lacking, and we should be worried because when you start to look at the daily kidnappings, bandits, there's a fine, we don't even know whether this is insurgency, whether this is banditry, whether this is a business of um, kidnapping anymore. We okay. don't know. So, Mr. Oshino, um, earlier, Mr. Lalipo Johnson said that he would score um, the Buhari administration um, between D to E and F9, you know, regarding the, oh, his overall Not F9, not F9. <laughs> <laughs> between D and an E and, and an E you know, the Buhari's uh, presidency. But looking at what's going on with the Southeast, you know, it wasn't as bad as it was. I mean, the way it is now wasn't as bad as before. So how would you, you know, score the president's handling of the insecurity challenges that have seemed to, you know, crop up in the southeastern part of Nigeria. You know, people in the southeast complain of, you know, militarization of the southeast. You know, how IPOB, ESN have been fingered in all the insecurity challenges here and there. But with the way the president is handling what's happening in the southeast, do you think he could do better? Okay, are you there? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, um, I will start by I will, I will be a little bit cautious talking about the Southeast. Um, I call on, to be honest with you, I call on my friends. I'm a realist. I'm a nationalist. I know the might of military. I remember when I was a student, you know, in the University of Ibadan, decades ago. I was locked in Agodi when Babangida was there. I was locked. I was a student, you know, president. And for almost three months, I was in Agodi prison. What do we do? Because we are agitating for school fees and we are protesting into the military arena, we were locked. It took a directed by the leadership, to come and release us. And it takes a lot of procedure. Let me tell my people in the Southeast you need to play the national politics. If you are killing within your domain, burning public assets, killing policemen, killing military officers, killing your people, it would not, it would not help your agitation. The Southeasterners have the legitimate right under the UN Convention to determine their fate. They have the right to determine where they want to live, how they want to live, who they want to govern, or how they want to be governed. But it needs to be done in a decent and civilized manner. That so, means Mr. Ibrahim, century. Mr. Ibrahim, now, so I want to ask you here. Then, I'm coming, please. You will say, how, you ask me how Buhari is handling the situation. Yes, exactly. Buhari is investing in one of the, the biggest projects in this administration, in the first mainland, but he's investing billions of billions of dollars in road networking, in construction within the southeast. Yes, you can be perfect. I am not perfect. The president is not perfect. You can't expect him to put everybody in the southeast in government. But you look at the trend of investment within the country. What is going on in the southeast? What is going on in the south south? What is going on in the south in the northeast? What I would encourage the president to do is to please visit the southeast for once. Wow. Take a tour of that. Well, well, Mr. Shinawo. Engage them. Um, engage the leadership. Engage the traditional rulers. Meet with the governors. What is the issue? If you want to leave Nigeria, it shouldn't be by killing innocent people, even the Hebrews. Well, Mr. 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 Shinawo, I, I want to I wanna quickly... Within that region, it is almost about 4.2%. Yeah. Most of the investment are out of there. Even Jilos Baja is out of that region. You've spoken about the so president who, visiting the southeast. It's not for this issue. Yeah. But just to quickly say that President Mohamed Buhari hasn't visited anywhere. 
So it's not going to be the first, you know, the South Asian is not going to be, you know, taken as a special case that it should visit. There's been deaths of dozens and dozens and dozens of people across Nigeria in different occasions. The president is talking, they're talking now about him going to Ghana to talk about the issues in Mali. 52 people died in Eboyi over the weekend. It's on record. 100 or 200 people were kidnapped in Niger State a um, couple of days ago. Um, it's, on, it's, on, it's in the news. The president hasn't visited any of these places. 87 I, people died in Benue. No, I'm just saying, no, why well, I'm asking you, because you said, <laughs> oh, you feel that president visits the southeast. And I'm saying that it is not in his character. It's not in his nature. It's not his, part of his governance style to visit anywhere. So he shouldn't start with the southeast. He should have been visiting a long time ago. I want, I want, thank you. Please our conversation this morning, our conversation this morning is about assessing where we are as a country today after six years. Do, do Nigerians feel safer today no, really. than they did in 2014 or in 2015? No. Do they feel safer today than they did during um, um, Umar Musayaratwa's time? Because you said, oh, that the, the security situation has transcended all, the, all that while and that's where, where we are today now because it started from way back then. But six years is enough, I believe. Mr. Oshinowo, for any person, as a, the, the managing director of any company, if you have had six years to be in office, don't, don't you think that people should be asking you where the company is after six years of you being there? So before you, I'll go back to Mr. Ladipo Johnson, I want to ask you as a Nigerian, do you feel safer? Do you feel better as a Nigerian today than you did six years ago? Six years ago, I was planning on moving out of this country because most of my businesses and networking are in Abuja. So I was not saved six years ago. But today, I was safe. I am safe in Abuja, not in the Southeast. I didn't have any business to do in the Southeast. So if, you, if I'm living in the Southeast, I might tell you that I'm not safe. But within the Abuja, Lagos, I am safe because if you consider, you know, you know, when you want to put the question, I will want us, to, I will want to encourage us, this is our country, we have no other country. I want us to remember that. We have no other country to go. If we are not safe in this country, so where have, do I save? Okay, where so have, Mr. Ibrahim, Mr. Ibrahim, so if, no, no, hold on. Mr. Ibrahim, can, Ibrahim can, you, can you hold on for a minute? A Ms. lot of trends. Mr. Sorry. Ibrahim, I need to ask you this question. There are 36 states in Nigeria. If you say you feel safe, Mr. Ibrahim, can you hear me? I said there are 36 I, I, I states. Can hear you. Let me, All right. Let me that All question. right. No, I need to. I need to. I need to. I need to ask you this question. Kindly hold on. There are 36 states in Nigeria. If you say you feel safe in Lagos and Abuja, what happens to the remaining remaining states and the people who the millions of people who live there? What do they do then? You can ask Mr. Ladipo, and Mr. Ladipo will tell you that he's saving Kwara and he's saving this state. When over 57 people were killed in Alaska. President John did not go there. It's only the governor that handled the situation and he deployed the National Guard. I'm not saying the president, I'm not covering the president. He needs to move up, he needs to reach out to a lot of people. All right, Ladipo Johnson, let's, let's bring you there. But if you ask Mr. Ladipo now, he will yeah. tell you, okay, he's not, he's, he's, his routine is between maybe Kwara or Ogun. If you go to Abekuta now, in Ogun State now, People will tell you that they don't know what's going on in the southeast. All right. If you um, go to, for instance, Kuala, they will tell you they don't know what's going on. So different people with different feelings. But for me, I am safe. This is my country. I have nowhere to go. But I will encourage the president to do more. I will encourage him to reach out. I will encourage him to engage. All right. Great. Uh, hold on, Mr. Shinawa. No doubt about that. But as an engineer, we need to stand nationalistic and Thank provide solutions and support the government. Mr. Shinawa, can you hold on? I want, I want to bring in um, Ladipo Johnson here, you know, and then we can move away from security and talk mm -hmm. about other aspects of governance. There's, you know, different other um, 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 uh, tactics or measures with which we rate, you know, a performing government. So you, you can quickly respond with regard to security. I'm, I'm seeing... Um, you know, a, a report here that shows that there's nowhere, you know, with regards status on security that is less than a medium. It's between medium, high risk, and extreme across Nigeria today. Yeah. Um, so quickly <clears throat> respond to security, and then let's move on to other, you know, aspects of governance. Well, unfortunately, we're where we're at because um, uh, we're all agreed that um, government inherited certain things. Mm -hmm. And you're, you were voted in because there are certain issues. You're mm -hmm. voted in to sort, sort problems out, sort, you know, and um, 
six years down the line, you can't keep um, relying on the fact that when we came in, this was this the was situation. Meant, yeah. um, unfortunately, with the Southeast, there was agitation. So what you should have done ab initio from the word go was to engage with um, stakeholders in the Southeast. You've had several opportunities, apart from the ministerial slots or whatever. You've had, like in the army or things like that, you've had several opportunities to show the Southeasterners that, look, you belong in Nigeria. But these, were not, these um, opportunities were not taken. And you still appointed maybe um, Fulani people or what have you. So the body language, which is what he used when he came in, or his people, his handlers used, mm -hmm. the body language of Mr. President, unfortunately, to most onlookers and most other tribes in the country, is like, go to hell. You understand? <laughs> I mean, I'm doing what I'm, I want to do. You, you, but you have to love Nigeria. But you see, it's a, it's a two-way thing. You know, people, we tell people that you have a duty to your country, but your country also has um, some form of um, duty towards you. And unfortunately, that is not there at the moment. So by and large, when we talk about insecurity, there's no need to argue. It's there every day. But by the time we finish this show, if we look at the news, you might discover that someone was kidnapped somewhere, some part of Nigeria, mm -hmm. yesterday night or this morning. So we know that that is the situation. Enough isn't being done. They need, I don't know what the integration is with the army, the police, and what have you. These things are just not working. And we're playing uh, catch up with the bandits, with the kidnappers, with the um, insurgents as well. Quickly speak on the economy and um, our fight well, against corruption. The, the, the fight against corruption, unfortunately, um, is um, <laughs> that has gone out of the window. Because um, most people, when you look at the corruption index, which they say that the government says, oh, ignore it. When, when the news is good, yes, this is, mm -hmm. we've done this. When it isn't good, you say it's a foreign influence or what have you. The, 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 the feel of the people in the country is that things, the main thing we voted for you for uh, hasn't been achieved. Yes. We do not feel... Unfortunately, we do not feel that this government is less corrupt than past or previous governments, which is a shame because that is what you came in on. You understand? And the fact that, and people tend to just, I don't know, he's such a lucky man. That's President Buhari. Because people tend to keep protecting him and protect. When things are good, oh, Buhari has done well. When mm -hmm. things are not good, it's the people surrounding him. No, the box stops at his table. Okay, let, let me bring in Mr. Ibrahim. Mr. Ibrahim, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, when Buhari, you know, was campaigning for president, you know, in 2015, he said he was going to fight corruption. But the recent, you know, um, report by Transparency International shows that Nigeria is the second most corrupt country in West Africa, and we are ranked 149 out of 180 countries. So what does this say really about President Muhammadu Buhari's presidency and fight against corruption? Would you still say that he's doing well? You know, um, I'm a very realist, and um, I look at the figure, I look at the statistics to base my judgment. Um, when it comes to anti-corruption crusade is, you can branch it into three, the giver, the taker, and the catcher. The catcher here, the giver right now are the people who offer bribes, who have intention to loot. I can tell you that those ones have turned to zero. A major ministry agency right now, you, before you feel that you want to do anything fraudulent, you have to think otherwise. You cannot give like in other governments. Now, the giver are very, very cautious. In risk management, we know that the risk level, the corruption risk level at this time is very low. There is no giver right now. It's very rare for you to see a fresh case of corruption. Like maybe in 2015, where you, 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 you just 
carelessly uh, or, sorry, or, or, um, or like I, say I wanted carelessly, to you just give I want anybody. to remind so, you of a fresh case of corruption, Mr. But Ibrahim. I that right now. Mr. Ibrahim. I wanted to remind you of a fresh look case of corruption. Look at what they've done. Mr. Ibrahim, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Mr. Ibrahim, can you hear me? I said, you said there's been no fresh case of corruption. I wanted to remind you of some. The COVID-19 palliatives that were meant to be distributed to Nigerians, we know that that's still ma that, that matter really is still pending right now. About millions of Naira that was allegedly looted, um, COVID-19 palliatives that were hidden in warehouses, those are pretty recent. Do you think President Buhari's administration did a great job in ensuring that uh, corruption really didn't work out in those cases? You know what, when you are talking about President Buhari, why don't you talk about the state governors? The President Buhari is not just only a figurehead. You have the president, you have the, you have the president, you have the governor, you have the National Assembly. So many National Assembly members were giving palliative, they store it in the warehouse. So many governors were giving palliative, they store it in the warehouse. Even some special advisors and commissioners were giving palliative to share to their people. Well, is that well, President well, Buhari that will come and share that? Well, Mr. Shinawa, Mr. Shinawa. Just as, just as you know, if you are talking about Mr. Shinawa, most of, I'm aware about one because I'm part of the state committee. Yeah, Mr. Shinawa, Mr. Shinawa, from, 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 can you hold on? Can you hold I'm, on? Because we're, we're, we're running out of time. Lock this down. Great, Mr. Shinawa, just, just as you know, and I know, and Aneta knows, and Mr. Lalipo knows, I'm sure President Muhammad Buhari knows, we wouldn't prosecute those people that you've claimed that you know locked up these things and stole these items. But the president knows. The, the anti-corruption agencies know. So the fact that they haven't acted, even when you know, and I know, and we all know, and they still haven't acted, it's, it tells a story about where we are with regards to fighting corruption, I believe. No, I, want, I want us to quickly... You are wrong. Well, okay. I'm coming, please, you are wrong. Okay. You, 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 if you, do you, can you give me the statistics, statistics of what the EFCC, what Bauer is doing right now in terms of prosecution? Bawa has been prosecuting a lot of cases within a two months that he has no office. All right. But it doesn't go on the media wall. So what I expect you to do is to write to, to, to the agency and seek for further clarification on fresh cases right. that are going on. Okay. If you look at the former, the former, the former um, um, uh, uh, EFCC boss, he is a media guy. He loves to showcase what he's doing. But Bawa is a corp professional. He was groomed from a cadet to where he is right now. All right. So he okay. believes that his job will speak for him. You understand? Okay. So um, I want you we to, need to do wrap a up. lot of thorough investigation. He okay. just, look at the former governor of Kuala State. After so many investigations, he just he, he has been arrested. All right, Mr. Right. Shinawa, so we, 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 we have about we have about two minutes left. And that's where I'm coming from. Absolutely, we have about two minutes left. So I would like you know, um, Ladipo Johnson to quickly speak if you have one minute um, on. Um, then we can talk about the economy. You know, poverty and economy. Um, inflation rates, 2015, 9%, currently 18.12% on employment, 8% in 2015, 33.28% uh, now. Debt profile, 12 trillion, now 32 trillion. It's, it's a lot of figures that don't look good. So quickly, in one minute, just um, let us know your... Well, in one minute, um, the Naira is almost at... Um, 490. Almost at 500 um, to the dollar almost at um, 700 to the pound. Um, we locked our borders, um, forgetting, we say we didn't want them to bring in rice, forgetting that we have a lot of um, um, Nigerian businessmen who trade across Africa. We did this even just after signing the African um, free trade um, agreement. agreement. It really doesn't make any sense. So I hope, you know, he's mid-term now in his second term. Mid-term. This is a mid-term report. He has some two years to go, and they can still begin to try to turn things around, especially with the economy. They might be fortunate. You know, we always have um, a general we can rely on, and that is the price of oil. It might go up and get things better. But basically speaking, we're in different places and the economy is not going in the direction it should Okay, go. let me quickly bring in Mr. Um, Ibrahim Oshino. Um, I want you to speak on infrastructure development, healthcare, education. Um, how you rate President Muhammadu Buhari, please. Um, on infrastructure, um, I rate President Buhari over 100, I will rate him 65%. Okay. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, transport, you know, That's road fair. networking, you know, you can't do it. ATS is just a very small time. I expect the next president to take care. 
In terms of health um, system in this country, of course, um, the health management system is just a 20 over, on, over 100. Okay. But the, with the COVID and their response to COVID-19, I think I will rate both the state government and the federal government at least 70 percent because we, are, we have a very limited, you know, um, a death rate in this country. Okay. Um, I think the president is still working, and I give it to Governor uh, President Minister Fashola. He's, he's doing all he could to ensure that um, um, the road networking and the contractors on site are doing and working their talk. So I give it to them. If you look at the Southwest now, um, Lagos Ibano Express Road has been there for so many, many years, from uh, Obasanjo to Yaradua, from Yaradua to Baikotni, from Baikotni to Jonathan, from Jonathan now to Buari. And of course, you and I apply that road. It's almost about 70% or more completed. Though the job pace is slow right now, but I think they can do better. If you look at the rail system, Minister Mishi also, you know, networking, of course, um, doing its best in terms of um, um, infrastructure linkage. If you look at the east-west road, I think I was in Portacourt and I applied that road. I was so amazed. In, I was so happy with what they are doing there right now. You know, look at different corridors from the north central to, you know, go okay. to so Canada, how about education? But by and large, I will encourage the president to please uh, listen to the voice of people. The national dialogue is, is necessary at this time. I am for a brand new constitution. I don't believe in the constitution we have right now. The constitution that was test on a fraudulent test with the people. This constitution is not by us. It's by this seven-month military supreme council that sat in one room and wrote this constitution for us. This constitution does not tailor to the reality of our system and is distant right now. All so right. the president, Thank I encourage him to seek a national dialogue, to let us have devolution of power. Okay. Let us All give right. power Brian, to the regions. You know. Let us give power to the president. Let us listen to other regions that are agitating for one or two or the other. You can't do everything for them, but you can pacify you know. them as a father of the nation. You can do more. And I encourage all the cabinet as well to please listen to the voice. You know, the NERA is so shameful. Where right. we are going right now, we are dependent on nation. Thank you very much. And we are locking our borders. I raised my voice that time that the minister, um, Rafi Arek Beshola, cannot lock the border for that long. We are not Ibrahim producing Moshinawa. anything. Uh, I think your point has been beautifully made. Thank you very much. Thank you. For speaking with us this morning. Always uh, interested in hearing your uh, perspective. And thank you to uh, Mr. Ladiko Johnson. Johnson for, you know, always honoring us with your time and thoughts on the breakfast. Thank you very much. Thanks. Right. Okay, so yes, here's where we draw the curtains on, you know, the conversation on assessing President Muhammad Buhari's uh, sixth year in office for now. The conversation would obviously continue as we approach the 2023 elections and beyond. But right now we'll take a break uh, to return to discuss more about that very terrible market fire uh, that raised the Ladipo uh, market on Sunday.